Hi, Laura. All right, guys. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm hoping, I feel like I have like a lot of stuff tonight. So we're gonna try, we're gonna try to get through it. And if we don't get through all through it tonight, I think we will. But um, I also just don't want you to get like completely like overwhelmed. But we're just gonna be talking a little bit about recruiting and bookings today. Um, but not just like um out of the box bookings. We're gonna talk about them like getting them from the parties themselves, from your virtual parties and from your cooking shows. But First, whoops, here comes Regina. Something must have happened. Um, whoops, where do we go here? Okay. But first, I gotta collapse you guys because I can't I can't see uh, everything. There we go. We'll do that. So we're gonna do a little bit because we we um talked a lot last week about mindset and goals and everything. And I died laughing because when Kim came on the meeting on Monday morning with me, if anybody watched the replay, Kim had her crown on and I was like, yes. <laughs> so, Oh, she's got it. Look at her go. She's ready to roll. So girls, let's get your, you know, let's get, make sure that our crowns are on straight right now because we got this. So so here's like a little bit of a mindset moment, okay? So everyone in this group wants to excel in this business and has set a personal goal to grow and be consistent. You guys wouldn't have joined this group if you didn't want to grow your business. So the truth is some will achieve goals by a date set and others will miss their first target date and slide into unwanted habits. We all do that. We all have times when we're like, ugh, we do, okay? But I want you to think about what might hold you back from achieving the goal you put in front of yourself. And always remember to say to yourself, are my actions moving me closer to my goal or farther away? That's one of those good ones too, to have like on a sticky note, on your planner, on your desk, on your computer, saying that to yourselves. Are my actions moving me closer to my goal or farther away? And if you're feeling that, you know, if you're feeling like you're moving farther away, that's one of those times to check in with your director, check in with your accountability partner and just be like, I don't know, I'm I'm feeling stuck, okay? Come on here. All right, so fear. The one thing I that holds most people back from having success is fear. So fear is false evidence appearing real. That's a good little definition. Most fear is self-created and can easily be self-limiting or become self-limiting. Our own brain wants to protect us from the fear. And we're often under the impression that things outside of us cause our fear when the reality is most of it begins with our thoughts and our beliefs. And that's where I go back again to say, we tell ourselves stories. Michelle, are you feeling that right now? I see you shaking your head. It happens, doesn't it? We do that. We self-sabotage. Like that's what we do. It was with lives, Facebook lives for me. I think I've conquered that this week though. Good, good. That's awesome. You can change the outcome of fear when you realize the source is in your own mind. Unconscious versus our conscience. A conscious. Jeez. We need to figure out the facts instead of believing the story. Okay. Take action is another cure for fear. Let's do an activity to help you overcome your fear. So Michelle, you kind of did that this week. You want to just quickly tell us about that? So yeah, and my directors and Kelly and Brandy probably can attest to this that I've been saying that I'm not going live. I, I just, I just, I'm too nervous about going live. And my nervousness was because I was afraid I would misspeak or I would whatever. And Friday night, my biggest fear came true. I was <laughs> showing everybody all of my baking stuff. It's my anniversary this past week. So I was doing an anniversary party. And I picked up a bunch of my pans to bring them closer to the camera. And they just spilled everywhere. Big, loud crash. And I just looked at the camera and went, whoops. 
when you say pampered, not perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> my biggest fear happens. So there's really nothing else to fear. Right. So there you go. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. Good job. I'm proud of you. And I see that you're, you're almost to, you're at like 22% or something or 17 and a half, but oh, okay. I, this was right before I got on the call tonight, a salesman of ours saw my live today with the deg. Uh-huh. He's going to order it tomorrow when he gets home from Hawaii. Ooh, nice job. That's awesome. You just never know it's going to catch somebody's eye for sure. So don't be afraid to show things. Um, so take action is what we're going to do next. So you guys don't have to write this down right the second. This is something I'm going to post afterwards. So we're going to write down one thing you fear as it relates to recruiting. Okay. Because that is always like this. I cannot have team members. I'm not a leader. I'm not, we do all of the things and we, we instantly freak out. I remember like I wasn't going to recruit for a very long time because I just needed to make $500 a month so I could stay home with Graydon. I didn't need anybody in my team. I just needed to get out of the house, make the money and come home. <laughs> and now I could kick myself for not recruiting a lot sooner I did in my business. But that was just a story I was telling myself. So Example on here is going to be, I am not able to recruit team members. What we're going to do is we're going to change these phrases. So you can say, when I ask enough people, I will easily recruit new team members. So we're going to just do some switching around and make it in an almost into like a, well, we're going to make like positive affirmations out of it. So positive affirmations are statements or phrases you repeat to yourself to describe a specific positive outcome. Example, I am the director of a strong and growing team that I am proud to lead. Or even something simple like, I recruit two consultants per month. What is one thought that has been holding you back from taking action in your business? And how can we create it into a positive affirmation? So that's what we're going to do is you're going to tell us a fear or a story that you have about recruiting. And then we're going to work that this week into positive to making a positive affirmation about it. So that's what you're going to homework's going to be. Um, we'll post this all later in the group or in the, you know, I'll post it in the get page. So homework will be to post one fear in the group, and then we will help you turn it around to a positive, okay? So we're going to put you out there, but one of the reasons, like, I want you guys to put it out there, and I know that seems scary in it itself, but the thing is, is nine times out of 10, somebody else on the team has the exact same fear that you do. And it's like, it almost feels a little bit better when you know that somebody else feels that same way too, okay? So how, does that sound super hard? We got this, right? Okay, all right, so here we go. We're gonna talk about some more stuff. So always remember that your brain isn't as smart as you think it is. Your brain will believe anything you tell it if you tell it often. What are you telling your brain every day? Positive affirmations work we need to retrain your brain, okay? So on to booking in and at parties, okay? So more than 80% of Pampered Chef parties are booked with people you meet at parties. So parties are most efficient and a most efficient place to book. Your goal is to at least to get at least three bookings from every party. Why do we want to get three bookings from every party? Anybody want to tell me why? So our host gets that $50 credit. Right. And there is a statistic too, and I'm going to see, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this to try to find it, to put it in the group later. But there is a statistic, too, about how if you only get one party to replace each party, like eventually you come down to zero because something cancels. So if you try to at least book two parties, you still will be coming out ahead, even if you have a party canceled because you had two booked. Like there's a whole theory behind that. So even booking three and having that be your goal, it's not only going to benefit you, but it's going to benefit your host as well. Okay, they're going to get 40% off at their 
at their friends' parties. And if they have three hold on that third party, they're going to get a $50 credit to use on their account, okay? So host coaching is one of the most important elements of successfully securing bookings at parties. By creating a partnership with your host, you'll find success in sales, booking, and recruiting. Host coaching is where you earn your paycheck. The party is where you pick up your paycheck. Always remember that. That is where you're making your money is with your host coaching. Ideas for booking parties at parties. I know everybody's not doing in-homes, but some of you are. So I think it's still very important because I feel like there's more and more of us that are giving it a try. So we need to still address this. So encourage your host to be active in the party, virtual or in-home. Um, you know, in-home, you know, you want them to answer questions. You want to um, make sure you're asking them, what do you like to use this for? I always say that, you know, and I do this in virtual parties too, they're going to believe you, the host, over me because I, of course, am trying to sell you something. So if their friend is validating how awesome that they think this problem is, or um, problem product is, the, if the host is validating that, your friends are probably going to follow suit and be like, oh my gosh, I need that then. Okay. They're not, they don't want to always believe me though, because I am, of course, trying to sell them something. So work with your host and encourage them to be active about things like that. Feature a power tool and share how to get it at a discount or for free. Power tools are one of the best things that we have as a booking tool. Um, and for new, like Kim, we call power tools are like the blender and the deluxe electric grill and grill, all those, you know, big items that are so much better to get as a host anyway. You're going to get them so much, you know, at such a better discount. Personally, invite everyone to host during checkout. At in-home parties, we usually have you come up with your order um, or they come up with their phone or I come and I have them come to me once they see that their orders came through. And I still talk to them about it. Even though I got their order, I might say, hey, I saw that you got this. Do you think that this is something you'd like to, you know, to have with it as well? You, it gives you an opportunity to do some suggestive selling but it also gives you that opportunity to have the conversation. Did you get everything on your on your list tonight? If you didn't, would you like to help our host out by being one of her parties booking or you know book parties booked? Um, and then of course in virtual parties we do follow up messages. Um, like everyone's a winner. Got some different things like that. Um, use door prize slips at in home parties. Um. If you're doing in-home parties and you don't have access to door price slips because they're not in our um, supply orders anymore, let me know because I've been pondering getting some made like at Office Max. So I might be doing that. So, or I do have one made into a um, Canva document, but I don't really like it because it's like a weird shape and stuff. So I need to work on that. But let me know if anybody needs that, if they're having in-home parties soon. They work great too at vendor booths. But sometimes even at vendor booths nowadays, people are doing them more in a Google form and taking like an iPad and having people pick out or um, fill out um, door price slips there. But um, a lot of times you're going to get maybes on a door price slip, even on your virtual ones, because in virtual parties, we usually do it in a Google form or it's called a survey. Um, but we do get a lot of maybes, but 90% of maybes will turn into a yes most of the time, people just have a question. That's usually what a maybe is. Okay. Virtual party booking tips. Um, create interest by using booking images from marketing imagery. Um, we soon are going to be um, rolling out into um, marketing kitchen. So that'll be something you guys will be hearing about more if you weren't at conference. You'll be hearing about that more soon. Um, go live using a power tool or a host's favorite product and let the guests know that they can get it at a discount or for free. Um, the other thing is too, is that if, you know, if it's not a host favorite product, what does the host want and, you know, feature that. And then that way you can hold on a second. Oh, okay. Is Isaac going with you? Oh, okay. Bye. 
Um, sorry. So, um, focus on, you know, make sure you're having conversations with your host to know what's on their wish list and use those power tools, the ones that they have on their wish list. And then they're going to be really excited about it too. So let the guests know that they can get it at a discounter for free. Um, build relationships with guests with private messages. You know, you might want to start private messaging people from the minute they join the party, you know, give them a welcome message. Message everyone who places an order to thank them. This is the only way in a virtual situation that we can create a conversation and build a relationship with them. Um, and if Facebook Messenger isn't working well for you, like Jenny has issues with Messenger, you might have to start using um, Project Broadcast as a texting option, which that's something we can talk more about if you're not familiar with it. Um, reach out to me or your director and we can explain that more. Um, message rock star guests, the ones who are actively participating and invite them to host. Rockstar guests are also a good recruit lead. So this is an example of a rockstar guest ask. Hi, Susie. Thank you for being a rockstar in Jane's party. Rockstar guests like you are just the kind of people I love to work with, and I'd like to invite you to be my next host. You'd earn some great rewards, and Jane would get a bonus as well. What do you think? Always end with a call to action type question. You never just want to be like, Jane would get a bonus as well. Boom. What do you think? Give them a reason to respond, okay? So always make sure you're using a question. Virtual party booking tips. Issue a host booking challenge. Ask, ask hosts to reach out to five or more guests to encourage them to book. The challenge is to get at least three bookings for that booking bonus. You should do five three-way messages on Messenger or Project Broadcast so you can easily respond. So this is something that you can do. Challenge words to send to the host. I have a challenge for you. I hope you will accept. I always challenge my host to help me get bookings. Our goal is to get three bookings from your party. You will get a 40% off item at all of their parties when they qualify. And PC will give you a bonus reward, a $50 credit added to your account when the third party is held. Basically, I send you the language and you message people you think would be great hosts like, like you and might want to earn free product. You do a group message with each host and include me in it. You send the message and then I take it from there. Pick five people you think would be great hosts. That way we'll be, we will likely secure three. Are you up for the challenge? A lot of people are all about the challenges. And if you have a host too that's all about the challenges, she might be your next recruit anyway because some people are the carrot dangle people. They love it. And if they can earn free product and earn money and all that stuff, they might very well be your next recruit. So if your host says yes to this, you're gonna send them this wording to use with the five hosts they have in mind. So hi, I just wanted to send you a quick message and say thanks so much for going to my virtual Pampered Chef party. I really wanted to host a party online because I love their products and wanted to get some for free, but I didn't want to clean my house or vacuum. You can, you know, do however you want in there. I always think that's funny though. Doing one online has been super easy. It was win-win. The consultant I'm working with has made it really seamless and she is great with her customers. I thought you would be perfect to host online party yourself if you wanted to earn some free goodies too. Another way you can go around this is you can do a surprise the host booking message. So thank you for joining Susie's party. I hope you're having fun. Susie gets a bonus for each booking that comes from her party. And when there are three bookings, she will get another bonus from PC. Would you like to surprise her be by being one of her first bookings? It's all online and very easy. Most of my hosts will earn more than $100 in free and discounted product. I have these dates available. What do you think? And I would always give people like, I have next Friday and the following Friday, but give like dates or whatever days you're starting your virtuals. Okay. 
mid party survey. Honestly, I actually put my door price survey in my, or my survey in my virtual parties three times. I do them on the first day. I start my parties on Friday. I do them on Tuesday. So I follow up with people on Wednesday and then I do them again the last day of the party. So the things you want to include in your Google form for the survey is obviously their information. If they're interested in hosting, are they interested in making money? If your host started their own Pamper Chef business, would you host a party for them? That one is an awesome question. Are you planning on placing an order? We don't want you to leave anyone behind. We don't want to leave anyone behind before we close the party. And what is your top wish list item? I was just telling, I think it was Kim, or it might have, I think it was Kim that we were just talking about. I have, I've been doing online surveys now since 2020, and I have so much data that I can go back to when the deg goes on sale. I can go back through and send a message to everybody on that list that I know that hasn't gotten the deg yet and just say, hey, it's on sale again. So you have a lot of data from those surveys even after the party, okay? So I think it's important. You're not always going to get every single person in the party to fill it out. You might only get a few people, but to me, the data is important to have at your fingertips. Recruiting at parties. So we're going to move to recruiting now. If you are wanting to recruit, a great goal is to recruit one person from every four parties you hold. So to do that, you'll need to identify three to five recruiting leads from every party. A lot of times that's going to be your rock star people in the party, including the host. That means you'll want to be intentional about recruiting. Remember, always ask this question to yourself. If you're really wanting to recruit, there is a recruit at every party, but is there a recruiter? Are you being intentional and asking? Because there is more than likely at least one or two people in every virtual party or cooking show that you do that's interested in this business. They just might be scared to ask. So you have to be looking for the flags that are getting them to you. So make sure you're being a recruiter. The very first lead you have from every point is your host. And while your host is your number one recruit lead, you also want to identify guests who may need this opportunity. So how do I identify potential new consultants at parties? At a cooking show, first, first guests to arrive, the ones that are anxious to get there, guests who offer to help at in-person parties. Oh, can I help you set that up? Can I take your bag to the car for you? Those people are all interested in what you're doing. I know it doesn't seem like that could be a red flag, but it is. Guests who participate by engaging through comments and likes and virtual parties. Um, and we know a lot of times people are just trying to get tickets to win something, but you can really tell by comments that people are making if they're interested in this. Everybody is a potential consultant, so ask everyone. I always used to think it was crazy because they would always teach us what we would do. They used to call it a full service checkout at a cooking show. And they would always say, always ask them if they want to be a consultant first. And then if they say no to that, then go to a bookie. And then if they say no to a booking, ask them if they want to have a catalog party, like before virtual parties were a thing. And I would always be like, what? I can't the going to ask them if they want to be a recruit, you know, if they want to join my team. Like, I just thought that was crazy, but it's true because they might not be ready for that, but they may want to book with you then. And they'll appreciate it if you're asking, if you're asking. So ask everyone, because you also don't like, if you're at a cooking show, you don't want to ask somebody and then don't ask the next person. I actually, my, my former director, Linda, that I signed up with, she told me once that she was at a cooking show and she asked this person and then they were like in a line and the next person came up and Linda did not ask her. And she said, why didn't you ask me to be a consultant? Like, so she flat out. So it's like, be consistent with how you're handling things. And then you're not going to miss anybody. You never know what somebody's going to say. It could be the most 
you know, you would not have in a million years thought that person was interested and they might be like, yeah, I'd like to give this a try. You never know. So always ask. So are you asking your host? So keep in close contact with your host. Um, I'll post this graphic as well. Um, in the team page or in the gap, or the, geez, Louise, the get page. I can't talk tonight. So there is a system of asking your host six times during and throughout your party before, during, and even after your party. Um, so I'll show these to you, but before the show is set up and then um, saying to them that they're excited because all your friends are RSVPing um, during the show, like you're, you know, I'm super excited. Your friends are excited. Would you like to, are you sure you wouldn't um, like to join my team when the party sales hit at least 200 before you close out your party? And then the last one is if you had bookings from that party before you start doing their friends as parties, ask them again, I'm just getting ready to set up Michelle's party. Are you sure? I'm going to ask you one more time before I do this. Are you sure you don't want to give the business a try? Because this party could be yours. Okay, so I'll post this. This has got some really good info on it. So how to get the commitment. That's the hard thing. It's like, you might have a conversation with them, then they might just kind of go out into no man's land and you're not sure how to get them. So informing and inviting. So informing is where you inform guests about the benefits of the business. You share your story. You use recruiting posts from marketing imagery. You do ask me anything posts. And you can even do video testimonials. Um, I have been using the Let's Get Cooking video in my parties. And I get some neat comments on that, that particular video because there's some really great testimonials in that video. So make sure you're looking through marketing imagery and stuff like that. It's kind of cool, which um, you'll find. And there's some really cute stuff now with um, Hustle with the Heart. The that is that how you say it? My gosh, my mind just went blank. Side Hustle with Heart. Is that what it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did I say that right? Um, with that new slogan for the year. Um, then invite. So invite guests to learn more about the business. We even have some... Um, Oh, I thought I had some out here, but no, I think they're in the living room. We got some new postcards too you can buy in um, the supply order that you can send to people or hand out to people at parties. Um, so invite guests. You can That can be through a post and then like then a follow-up message or even just messaging, period. Play a game that opens up communication. Um, there's some cute... Um, like all the perks of a bit the business, use those kinds of things in your party. Simple guessing game where guests have to um, message you their answer. Reply with thanks. Are you having a good time in the party? Then keep that conversation going. And then look for the flags, like especially rock star guests. Um, inquire. This is where you inquire about any questions guests may have about the business. You can do this through text, messenger, or even a quick call. Sometimes I'll just set up a call with people. Do you want to chat a little bit about this? Um, it might be easier for me to ask your questions right away then. Um, so here are some questions you may want to ask. Have you looked at our website? Um, there's the Be a Consultant page that you all have available to you on your website. And within the Be a Consultant page is our lookbook. That's something that you can send them even, you know, direct them to that particular part of your business page. Cause, because from the Be a Consultant page as well, that's where they can also join is right from there as well. Um, what questions do you have? Make me a list. So when I'm getting ready to have a conversation with somebody about the business, that's all I'll say is, okay, I'll talk to you at six o'clock on Monday. Just make sure that you talk, you know, even you can talk with your um, significant other and then just make a list of all the questions you have. So then we can, you know, then we can get right at it when I talk to them. What could this business do for you? Ask them that. What kit would you choose? Make sure you've shared those kits with them. And then are you ready to get started or do you still have more questions? Sometimes we do the 
throw up all over them and go, and you can do this and you can do this and you can have tax write-offs and blah, blah, blah. And you know, you know, and then we've completely made them be like, bye, I don't think I want to do this. This is too much. You're scaring me. So always ask, are you ready to get started or do you have more questions? Sometimes they're just ready to get started and they need to know where to click on the website. Okay. So ask every person at every party about the opportunity. Ask short, specific, open-ended questions that require more than a yes or a no answer. Instead of, have you ever thought about becoming a consultant, which can sometimes get an instant no, ask if you had extra money each month, how would it benefit you? Or even, could you use an extra stream of income? That's another one that's kind of, you know, doesn't make them maybe feel so like, oh, why do you think I need extra money? You know what I mean? It's just if you could use an extra stream of income. Personalize your message based on what you've learned about that guest during the party. Um, not everyone you invite will say yes. So intentional follow-up is very important. So call to action. We're going to do the little homework thing where we post, but then I also just want you guys to just kind of, I'm going to read through these for you to think about. I'll post this as well. So like I said earlier, post a fear that we can help you turn around to a positive aff affirmation. If you are struggling with this and want to talk to your director or me about this, let us know. You can even, I mean, or your accountability partners. Okay. Follow up with people from the last month's parties. Maybe there's some people that you're thinking about now after we talked about this tonight, like, geez, maybe I should have asked them about a booking or maybe I should ask them about the business, especially because they can get their business for free this month if they qualify in their first 30 days. Post recruiting conversations that you are not sure how to follow up on. So post a screenshot of what something said and we can help you with the answer. We kind of call that the big ask. I think that Brandy and Sarah asked you guys, if you were on the last session, they asked you to do that too. So just take a screenshot like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> don't, you know what I mean? Wait, pause, pause a minute, take a breath, and then we'll help you with how to follow up with that person. We'll give you the words, okay? It's the best way to learn how to, to say things about bookings and recruiting is to bounce it off somebody else and we will help you, you know, Crystal's been around for a couple of years now and she still does that with me, you know? So it's not like, I mean, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't even know what to say to this person. So use the resources you have. That's what we're here for. Do the same thing with potential bookings. All above items are all things you and your accountability partners can discuss this week. And bonus, if you have a discussion with your director. This always just helps us know where you're at and what you're wanting from your business. So keep in touch with your director, okay? And your accountability partner. That's been going. I saw a couple of people had some good conversations with them this week. So I loved seeing that. Anybody have any questions? I know I'm a little bit over. I did better than I thought. Who said somebody had something in the chat? Let me look. One thought for me, keeping recruiting is me not having time for a new recruit. Okay, Michelle. Well, I typed that there and then you said, put it in the group. So then I re-put it in the group. So yeah, okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and we'll, we'll respond to that. But one thing I want you to know is, are you a director? Okay. So it is not. Team lead. I'm a team but lead. I'm a team lead. You're a team leader, right? So it's not that you... You are not responsible right now for your recruits. Your director is responsible for your recruits. Of course, especially since you're a team leader, we would want you to work with us, but it's not your responsibility to train them, okay? That's what we get paid overrides for, is to support our team and train them. So that's one big thing that people are like, I can't do that. I don't have time for that. You don't have to yet. Okay, technically, of course, if that's something that you're looking forward in the future, I want you to learn right with me. Okay, and you can see how we do it. So hopefully that helped. 
take that responsibility off. And Brandy just went, what? I'm supposed to train people? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Brandy. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Anybody else have a question right now? Okay. All right. Oh, you know what? Who all did the morning drive, even if you weren't on the call with me? Who did it last week? I had a I lot did, of views. I did two of them. Awesome. And, I but I'm behind. I'm going to watch the rest of them. I just haven't had time. Yep. And to continue that, I did post that Kristen Boss seven-day thing that challenge that she has. I did that in June when she started that. And that was super awesome for me, too. I loved it. So you can go ahead and do that. And it's just whenever you start it, then the emails will start like coming to you daily. Um, so you can kind of do it like you can sign up for it and then just do it when you're ready to do it too. Um, Kim did it with me one of the mornings. Betsy did it with me another one of the mornings. Um, if any of you guys filled out that weekly tracker, you can post it on the bandwagon page for my 90 day challenge because your PC dollars are at stake for that. I award PC dollars every month for that. Okay. So anybody else do it? I started to, but I ran out of time this afternoon between okay. doing my live and my laundry and getting caught up with last week's meeting. Well, and that's even for me right now with kind of things are settling down a little bit, you know, with everything that with my mom and stuff. And I'm even like working on I feel like I, I mean, even though I know what I need to do, I'm like, I feel like I need to go back down and write, like, what do I need to do on Mondays? What do I need to do on Tuesdays? Like, I feel like I need that again. And I always feel like I need this at this time of year anyway, because you're coming off the summer, the summer's crazy. You're not, if you don't have it, your schedule is always kind of a little different in summer. Even if you work full time, I still feel like it feels like that. So I'm always at this time of year, I'm not that I don't want school to start, you know, I mean, I, you know, school's like, ugh, but I'm like always ready to have a schedule again. Like I always feel like I'm ready to have that schedule again. So um, I think this is a good time of year to kind of get yourself back on track. Okay. All right. I have no idea what we're going to talk about next Sunday, <laughs> but I'll think of something. Okay. I might have to pick Brandy and Sarah's brain this week on that one. So, all right, girls, you guys have a good night if nobody has any more questions, okay? Thank you. I appreciate you. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good week. Yeah, thank you. You guys too.